Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit, I'm CP and in this video I'm reviewing Shivas Regal 12. As per usual, this review will be conducted using the Bespoke Unit Whiskey Matrix, a quantifiable review formula that you can use for your own reviews at home, or if you don't have time to watch the entirety of this video, you can refer to the full written write-up in the description of this video, where you'll see a PDF version which will give you a quick overview of Shivas Regal. In 1801, brothers James and John Shivas opened their own luxury grocery store in Aberdeen. However, the first blend wasn't launched until 1854 by the descendants Stuart and James Jr. Although it was no longer family owned by the 20th century, in 1950 the brand bought the Milton Distillery in Speyside, which they renamed to Stratisla. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And since 2001, the brand has been owned by Bernou Rigal. Now it still operates from this uh, distillery in uh, Keith Speyside, and that is the core of this blend. The majority of malts will probably come from there. And of course, the overall blend is a best kept secret, although there is rumors that the Strathclyde distillery in Glasgow does contribute to this. Outside of that, we're not entirely sure. There are stories always about different single malts finding their way into this blend, but we can safely say that each whiskey in this is at least 12 years old. Now, it is also chill filtered and of course aged in ex bourbon barrels. As for the finishing, I imagine some sherry casks are involved, but there's nothing to confirm this. Anyway, with that all being said, let's jump into the review. Now, as you can see, I have a Shivas uh, branded glass, and I'll talk about why in a minute, but we'll take a look at the robe. Now, this is probably not the best glass to taste in. I usually use a, a Bourgeois uh, Saveur glass or a Glencairn, but in this case, since this came with the bottle, uh, I thought I'd give it a try instead. It's nice, heavy at the bottom, but it doesn't have a conical shape, so I'm not gonna get the most of the bouquet. I have tasted this already. This is why this has already been written down on the formula. So this is mostly for flash. So in terms of robe, we're looking at sort of a polished, aged amber color. There might be some caramel involved, but I cannot confirm or deny that. And then in terms of clarity, it is quite clear. It isn't as hazy as some other blends. And in terms of the legs, they're very thin and they're very fast. Now, in terms of whirls, you're not gonna get much because it is chill filtered. Now, let's take a look at the nose. It's very intense, very prickly, not overly complex, uh, but it is full of character, let's say. It, it does have a rich identity. We're looking at notes of some caramel, some very crisp red apple, and then there's a little floral note of heather, as well as some soft vanilla just to take the edge off it. I suppose now the next best thing to do is to give it a sample. Primary flavor, you're looking at quite umami here. There's some savory, there's some sweet, really a combination of different, um, different primary flavors. But the mouthfeel, very creamy, luscious, envelops the palate. You're looking at an opening of some spiciness. There's some nutmeg in there, a little bit of creamy hickory. So I don't know if uh, you're, you've had hickory before, but this is normally, it comes in liquid or powder form. It's much like instant coffee. In fact, it was very popular in France as an alternative to coffee, and I am digressing badly here. But anyway, hickory with some milk, very nice hot drink. And this really kind of evokes that, that creaminess of the, of the cereal of the hickory. And then we have some malt. Again, cereal, very rounded flavor. That's just the opening. We then travel into the heart. We're gonna get some black tea. So nice sort of herbaceousness, but still black, thick tea. You know, an English breakfast that has been sitting in the pot for way too long. And the tea bag's in there. And it started to have that strange sort of oily uh, thing on the surface. You're kind of getting that. And then again, the heather comes back, this floral element that just kind of takes the, uh, takes the harshness away from the black tea and adds a nice, a nice roundness. It's not incredibly complex, We're, but the nose is still more complex than the actual palate itself. But there is, you know, there is a journey here. There's an evolution of flavor. You're gonna have a nice 
palette of notes. And then uh, the texture, very smooth, creamy, quite heavy on the palette, but not overly so. And then in maturity, it's more mature than the, the majority of blends as it is minimum 12 years old, but you do really taste that. You do taste that it has been aged for some time. The finish, well, I'm gonna have to try again. Oh, the finish, the linger, the length of it isn't crazy long. It is long for a blend, again, but it doesn't really persist for all that long, though it is full in flavor. Again, we're gonna have some vanilla, which we first detected on the nose. That adds a nice roundness to the overall finish with some acacia honey. That adds a nice succulent effect that just, you can feel it right at the back of the palate. And then walnut, which adds a nice sort of warm nuttiness to the overall finish. Now with that out of the way, we'll look at the experience. And this talks about the presentation and the occasion value for money. So here we have distinctive bottle, nice classic label with the cross swords. Overall, well displayed, quite distinctive, and a little bit more ornate than your typical blend. And then if we look at the uh, cork quality, well, I was kind of disappointed because when I first opened this up and I unraveled the foil, I thought, ah, oh, a blend with a cork. Well, no, it's actually a screw top. This is a plastic cap and it has, the, uh, it has the screw sort of pressed into the glass. Then looking at the packaging, now typically it comes in a metal tin, which is very attractive and very popular at airports, but I got it, as you can see, with, these, with this glass. I actually have a second one here. Very bottom heavy tumblers, I, I like this, and you have the Shivas logo uh, pressed into the bottom with the logo on the front here. Came in this box, and this came at the same price for me, as the uh, regular uh, tin would have done. So I thought, oh, this is a nice change. So that leads me on to the value for money. In the USA, you're looking at about $46. So it's quite pricey for a blend. We're kind of getting our way into uh, Johnny Walker black label territory here. Of course, not as expensive. I think it's blue label, isn't it? The most expensive one. And um, in France, where, where I am, I got this for about $30, which is actually quite close to a single malt territory, like a Lefroig 10-year-old would cost about the same as this, which actually is absolutely fine. As blends go, this is quite sophisticated. It does, you know, bear well, does fare well compared to uh, its, more, its single malt brethren. And then in terms of occasion, again, this is more of a premium blend. So this is something that you could certainly have at a more formal gathering. You could certainly enjoy it with something a little bit more sophisticated, or if you're going to try and impress some friends or guests, having a bottle of Chivas uh, Regal is gonna be no problem whatsoever. This leads me finally onto pairings. And this, is, this isn't scored, this is just what we have here in the bottom corner of the uh, whiskey matrix. It's just a thought exercise to give you some suggestions of how to best enjoy it. Now, two uh, ideas relate to seafood. So sea bass would be a great option, or you could choose scallops. And generally speaking, fish dishes would fare quite well with this. You could even go a little bit further, you know, smoked trout or smoked salmon but these, the smokiness of these may dominate the bouquet of the whiskey. So it's really up to you. If you enjoy extending any peat or smokiness that you'll find in this, because th th there is a little bit of flint, maybe a little bit of peat in there somewhere, that might be an interesting exercise. Alternatively, roasted chestnuts, especially in the winter time, it's cold, roast some chestnuts, settle down by the fire, enjoy a glass of this, start peeling away the chestnuts and just enjoy, that would be great. Alternatively, Consider also uh, some cigars, and a bespoke unit, we love cigars. Now, I was thinking of an Ashton Heritage, so this nice, um, I think it's a double Corona, this one. We're gonna review this one soon on bespoke unit, and if it's already reviewed, it'll appear up here in the corner. This is a cigar that probably go quite well. It has a nice balanced flavor. Uh, the body is kind of medium plus, which would go quite well with the whiskey in terms of both structure, character, and flavor. Otherwise, try and opt for more Habano wrapper style uh, cigars, so sun-grown, not shade-grown. You don't want anything too creamy. That being said, a Connecticut could go quite well, like the J.C. Newman Brickhouse Double Connecticut. But if you want to go something heavier, aim for spice rather than anything that has been aged for too long. A Maduro wrapper would probably be too complex and may not pair well with this uh, whiskey. 
And that just about covers it. So that's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any more questions about Shivas Regal, or if you'd like to uh, share your own experiences, or even give us some requests of what you'd like us to cover in future. Until our next video, head to bespoken.com and see all the other lifestyle subjects that we cover. I'm sure that there'll be something you'll love, and you can also go to bespokeunit.com forward slash whiskey where we have an in-depth whiskey resource where you can learn more about everyone's favorite Scottish spirit.